The Holy Gospel according to St. John. We begin at the start of chapter 20. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that Christ must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their home. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, Mary said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. When it was evening on that day, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the authorities, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. 
If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Jesus. Sisters and brothers in Christ, grace to you and peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mary Magdalene missed Easter. The tomb was open when she got there. Her confusion and despair led her to the tomb. When you just don't understand and your overwhelming feelings shut you down, you can act automatically. Someone she loved had died, so she went to the tomb. She brought spices in hopes that someone might open it for her. Her confusion and despair only deepened at this intimidating emptiness that she found. An open tomb. Jesus gone. She reported it back to the others and then she went back and just stood there confused, alone, and sad. She had no idea what to do next. Then she heard her name the voice of her beloved friend and teacher said, Mary. And then she knew Easter. Then she knew resurrection life. The other disciples missed Easter too. Some didn't come, others came and then left. Apart from the women, the rest of the disciples were locked away for fear, fear that they had nothing to live for now that Jesus was dead, fear they were next, fear of facing a world without hope. 
Peter and John heard Mary's terrifying news of an empty tomb. So they ran to it, looked in, then they went back home and locked the door again. But Jesus didn't forget them. Jesus came to them too, where they were, through their locked doors, and breathed on them, all of the disciples, women and men in the upper room, breathed on them peace. And then they all knew Easter life. They knew resurrection life too. Thomas really missed Easter. He wasn't at the tomb Sunday morning or in the upper room Sunday night. He missed it all. And when he came, his doubts were legitimate. He was not going to raise his hopes based on the idea that the others thought they had seen Jesus. He couldn't build his faith on what they said. All of his hopes in Jesus had been so deeply crushed, he wasn't going to dare to hope again without some proof. Something he could see and know and touch himself. So Jesus came to Thomas too. He knew Thomas had missed Easter, so he came to him, and he didn't judge. Jesus knew some people need to see things for themselves before they can believe. He reached out and took Thomas's hand and drew it to his side and said, touch this for yourself, Thomas. See who I am. And then Thomas knew Easter too. Then he knew resurrection life. What do you do if you miss Easter and you're confused beyond your ability to sort it out? You've heard of Christ's death and resurrection your whole life, but you don't know how that helps you understand your loneliness, your pain, your sadness. What if you just live life day to day, just going through the motions, doing life, not living life? Listen, can you hear what Mary heard? In your confusion and sadness, Jesus comes to you and says your name, your name. In your baptism, your name was imprinted on God's heart. You are known and beloved, God's dear child, wet from the font's waters, and Christ is calling your name. This is what resurrection life means in your life. You don't need to understand everything, not if you know you are known to God and loved by the risen one. This is what Easter means to you today and tomorrow. What do you do if you missed Easter and you're so afraid you're locking yourself away? You fear being hurt, so you lock others away from your heart. You fear the things that threaten and surround this world, so you hide behind your garage doors and your locked front door, and you don't engage. You fear the sacrifices you think it might take to follow Christ, so you lock away your mind and your imagination so you don't need to think about it, and you can't imagine how Easter can make any difference with this. Well, look. Do you see? Jesus comes through all your locks and breathes God's spirit of peace into you. You are filled with God's love and forgiveness, and that takes away your fear. There is literally no place you can lock yourself away that Christ cannot come and say, peace be with you. This is what resurrection life means in your life. The Spirit is breathed into you, and you don't have to be afraid anymore. And you don't have to lock 
yourself away. You can risk love. You can risk witness. You can risk reaching out. Risk life. This is what Easter means to you today and tomorrow. What do you do if you miss Easter and your doubt is so strong you can't get around it? There is so much evidence of death and destruction that it's hard to see how what happened on that Sunday morning long ago still matters changes anything. Doubt is part of faith, but what if it seems like all you have is doubts? That you wonder if there is life in Christ for this world, life for you, and if only you could touch Jesus and just know for sure. Reach out then and touch. Take this bread and wine and know that Jesus has come to you. Hear him say, this is me. In here is my love and forgiveness. In here is my life. Look at this community around you who eats and drinks alongside you and hear the risen Christ say, these ones, they're me too, for you. In them, in them you can touch my wounded hands and feet and side and believe. This is what resurrection life means in your life. In this touch, Jesus comes to you and eases your doubts, helps you believe and find hope. This is what Easter means to you today and tomorrow. It is so hard to grasp that Christ's death and resurrection mean so much more to us than life in heaven. We know that Easter tells us that we have life with God after we die. That is truth. That is joy. That is grace beyond belief. But it's also only a fraction of the good news the risen Christ offers. And that those first believers and the scriptures tell us has happened in this death and resurrection. Remember, Martha, at the death and burial of her brother, had no doubt that he would be raised at the last day. Jesus needed her to experience resurrection and life in him as her reality now, in this life. Christ has modeled for us a path of love a love that loses, dies, is vulnerable because it is the only path we can walk that will lead us to this resurrection life that ends our confusion, brings peace to our fears, and calms our doubts, fills us with Easter life in this life now, and ultimately heals the whole world. But don't worry if you sometimes think you've missed the point, as if you missed Easter. Jesus will always come to you where you are to call you by name, to breathe peace into you, to take you by the hand, and then send you out again to bring this into the world. Because this is why we're called to be filled with Easter life and then bring it to others. Mary was sent as an apostle to tell the others the good news. All the disciples in the upper room, women and men, Thomas included, spirit breathed, were sent to forgive, to love, to feed Christ's sheep. This is our call now. Now that we are filled with Easter life, we are sent to be Easter to those who missed it, just as others have Eastered us, to tell them that they are known to the triune God and loved by name, to bring peace and hope to those who have locked themselves away, to reach out and embrace those who struggle with doubt, 
to bear this life into the world as Christ bears it for the healing of all things. This is what Easter means to us today and tomorrow. And we will never be the same. In the name of Jesus, amen.